hello. Uh, I'm Dinkar Sitaram, a, a professor at PES University, and I'm going to talk about uh, OpenSim. Uh, this is a simulator for OpenStack that we are building. And uh, before I start, I'd like to thank EMC for their support in uh, helping us uh, build this. Uh, so the reason why, we, there are many reasons why one might want a simulator for uh, OpenStack. Uh, so one obvious uh, reason is, uh, you know, if you're migrating something to a cloud or something, how, how well it, will it perform on the cloud? Or if you're buying more servers, changes in the hardware configuration and things like that. Uh, and additionally, we may be, uh, for, from our academic point of view, uh, we may be developing new scheduling algorithms or storage algorithms and things like that. And it's obviously of interest, great interest to figure out uh, how well these would do in a real cloud. Uh, so th basically, the, this is for uh, performance analysis and uh, also for uh, you know research into the algorithms for OpenStack. Uh, so before I actually get into the details of that, uh, so th we plan to release OpenSIM as, uh, as uh, an open source pro product, uh, and we and if anybody out there is uh, interested in beta testing it or using it and giving us feedback on how well it works, uh, I would really welcome that and. Uh, you could please write to me and I will uh, help in doing this. Uh, so first, let me talk about uh, what actually does OpenSim uh, simulate. So these are the things that OpenSim simulates. Uh, so right now, we it simulates Nova, uh, Neutron, which is a networking part, and Cinder. Uh, Swift is kind of simulated as being a constant delay, uh, but we are building a detailed storage model of Swift. So we'll model the storage servers, you know, the metadata servers, and so on. Uh, so as to get a more accurate model, and that's work in progress. Uh, so a brief uh, overview of the uh, OpenSIM architecture. Uh, there are three layers. So at the top is the user uh, workload layer, which talks about you know what the user uh, workload looks like, what are the applications they're running, and so on and so forth. Uh, then there is the OpenSIM layer itself. So in OpenSIM, uh, in the Nova part, we simulate the VMs, uh, the physical nodes, and uh, um, also the, uh, the VM scheduling and so on and so forth. Uh, then in the networking part, we simulate the network addressing, IP addressing, and so on and so forth. And in the case of uh, Cinder, uh, we simulate both the block storage as well as uh, the SAN storage. Uh, then underlying all of that is CloudSim, which is a simulation package uh, developed by the University of Melbourne uh, under the guidance of Professor Buya. And that is what we are using as the basis for the OpenSim uh, simulator. Uh, so a little bit of uh, uh, detail about how we have actually implemented OpenSim. Uh, so uh, you know the simulator uh, has a knowledge of the number of uh, hosts and VMs. Uh, and what happens is it receives a VM alloc allocation list. So there's a policy called, the, there's a class uh, in CloudSim called the VM allocation policy. And we modified this to take care of uh, uh, the NOAA scheduler, so it simulates the NOAA scheduling. Uh, and then the VM allocation policy schedules the VMs on the host uh, the, the same way that uh, NOAA would do it if it was a real system. Uh, so th this is uh, you know, some, more, some more detail uh, on how uh, the VM allocation policy uh, works in terms of uh, you know, the, how it simulates the filters, filter scheduling policy. Uh, so uh, OpenSIM also simulates the uh, OpenStack uh, networking. Uh, and there is uh, there are a number of classes which do this. There's the uh, network class uh, and the subnet class. Uh, so it supports the creation of a number of subnets. And it supports simulation of the delay uh, in the networking. Uh, due to the exchange of messages and so on and so forth. Uh, and finally, uh, in the case of uh, Cinder, uh, so what uh, uh, OpenSIM does, uh, we simulate the simulation of uh, disk operations like insertion, deletion, transfer of files, and it supports both synchronous as well as asynchronous I.O. In, in the workload. So it simulates modeling both the, the performance of synchronous as well as asynchronous I.O. Uh, so one question that is there is uh, how do you derive inputs for the simulation? Since you know you need to yeah, an application in order to, in order to uh, model its performance very accurately, uh, there are a lot of quirks about the application performance, the, the, the way the application consumes resources that you need to know. 
so there are two ways of doing it. We have a workload model generation tool. Uh, so first of all, if you're modeling a real workload, uh, then and then what you have to do is run star on the individual nodes, and then you have workload uh, tool which extracts the relevant fields from star, and then it produces the input that OpenSIM needs for running the simulation model. Uh, then the other case, of course, is where you're not trying to model the performance of a real workload, uh, but you have some artificial workload in mind, uh, and you want to predict how well that would work in kind of in, in open in open stack. Uh, so there, for that purpose, we you know you can generate manually generate a text file uh, which uh, describes the workload. The text file format that you need is uh, is documented, uh, and so you can use that. Uh, so now I will talk about uh, uh, you know some of the simulation runs uh, we've done to validate uh, you know the performance of uh, OpenSim. Uh, these are not ex exhaustive, but you know just give some idea of the kind of runs that we've done. Uh, so the first one which we did was to run a well-known benchmark, which is Unix Bench, uh, on a, a small cloud consisting of uh, three servers, and compare the CPU utilization. So essentially, Unix Bench runs. And you know there are requests for creations of VMs running a particular application in the VM, and then deleting the VM, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this over here compares, uh, as I said, this is a three-server run. Uh, this compares the CPU utilization uh, of the uh, actual uh, versus the predicted from cloud sim. And uh, as you can see, uh, the actual utilization, which is which is the smooth curve. Uh, is at 27 percent, and CloudSim predicts uh, that the utilization of server one uh, would be 25 percent. And similarly, for the second server, this is uh, 29 percent versus 25 percent, uh, and for the third server, 20 percent versus 21 percent, uh, which was predicted. Uh, so the uh, CPU utilizations are fairly close, uh, and what that implies is that for this set of runs. Uh, then the scheduling algorithms in Nova are being simulated accurate, accurately because uh, you know we get the same request for scheduling, and those had to be unless they're scheduled the way Nova would schedule them, uh, you would not get the same CPU utilization, and so that is fairly accurate. Uh, then we also did some measurements uh, to validate the storage model, that is the Cinda model which we have right now, uh, and uh, so again we ran. Uh, I, I think Bonnie plus plus, uh, which is a well-known storage benchmark, uh, we ran that against uh, an OpenStack, uh, you know, cloud, uh, and saw what's the actual IOPS we got versus the predicted IOPS. And uh, these are some of the storage measurement parameters: the I/O transactions per second, read-write ratio, disk seek time, maximum transfer rate. And uh, the van delay is there because uh, one of the things we're interested in looking at is hybrid clouds. And in case you have hybrid clouds, you may have multi two different clouds that are separated by a van. And then you, in that case, if you're doing remote data access across the van, uh, you can specify the van delay. But otherwise, if it's just a single data center, uh, then of course that would be zero. Uh, so again, this one shows the IOPS and simulated results with the top one being the simulated results and the bottom being the IOPS. Uh, so inadvertently, we've left the average uh, number of IOPS off. Uh, but the, uh, if, you'd comp if the average is computed, then that is sim similarly close in the same way that uh, you know you saw for uh, Nova. Uh, and again, we had three servers, and the IOPS, as you can see, qualitatively, the shapes of the IOPS are the same. And if you measure the average, also that that is correct. And I apologize for leaving, leaving that off the slide. Uh, so now I'll talk about the GUI component of CloudSim. Uh, this is uh, a separate component, actually. The, uh, uh, the GUI component of OpenSim, this is uh, something called Cloud Analyst, which is a package which is already uh, from University of Melbourne, and it's integrated with CloudSim. Uh, and we are in the process of integrating this with OpenSim. Uh, so if you look at the, this is the main GUI component, uh, which has a number of buttons uh, on the left-hand side for, uh, you know, uh, defining the data centers, defining the workloads, and so on and so forth. Uh, so the first screen is the, the, the uh, uh, define a data center screen, uh, which allows you to define uh, the, uh, the data center. So a data center actually, uh, in the uh, cloud sim sense, is a collection of machines. 
like for example, if you have Windows machines and uh, Linux machines, a data center which really had Windows machines and Linux machines, uh, then you would model this as uh, two data centers. And uh, <coughs> so even though there's actually one data center, uh, and then after that we have uh, uh, another set of GUIs uh, which is there for configure, configuring the network delays between the uh, different uh, data centers. And of course in the case I gave where you have a, a one physical data center with Linux servers and uh, Unix servers, the delay would be very low. Uh, you also, th then after that, uh, you can configure the simulation uh, with, uh, you know, specifying the number of users and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, then uh, after that, this is the uh, graph which shows the final results. Where after OpenSIM runs, uh, the, the graph would show the average response time per transaction uh, in the simulation and the throughput per, per transaction, the, the throughput of the different number of transactions. Uh, so uh, the uh, future work, what we'd be interested in doing uh, is, you know, adding the detailed Swiss model in, uh, and also, of course, releasing it to the open source community. Uh, and if there's anybody out there who is interested in helping us validate the model by running it on a very large configuration and so on, uh, we'd be very happy to support uh, people in that. Uh, so thank you very much.